So I'm yeah. extremely pleased to be here uh, to to be able to speak a bit about uh, how we work at, uh, at at Net Carbon, what we have designed, and how all this work of the of the community is like helping us to to develop and to to improve some of our algorithm. Um, I have okay, I have some slides and um, it's up. It's going to be easier. Okay. Yeah, and Basil will be talking about how to turn satellite data to insights at scale. So probably yeah. we'll be talking about the satellite data and scalability, like both of these important things at the same time. And yeah, it's, exactly. a tutorial. it's a hour long tutorial and we are starting like uh, a few minutes earlier. Uh, so yeah, Basil, you would have like a five to six minutes like extra. So you can basically, you know, extend okay. and give more, give more about, give, explain more about your talk. So, without further ado, uh, Basil, take it away. Thank you very much. So, um, exactly, we will speak a bit about uh, how to turn satellite data at scale. Um, mostly, the, the tutorial was based on the um, long surface temperature, but we, we will have to, we will um, change, we, we have changed some, some different features in order to compute some different indexes. Um, what we are going to speak during this tutorial is mainly based on like a free main, uh, the free main part of a UTL, is, which is extract, transform and load. And uh, if we have some times, uh, we will speak a bit about uh, how to, to, to build the, the pipeline on top of it, because we will need um, obviously like some different um, packages and different function to, to, to run those different algorithm. But at the end, we also need like an orchestrator in order to, to be able to compute the pipeline like at each, uh, at some different um, time, um, like uh, every day, every two days, every month, uh, whatever. So if you have some time, so we will speak a bit about, uh, about this, um, this part also. Um, before that, um, I want to very quickly uh, introduce NetCarbon. So Net Carbon is a pretty young startup. We are working on satellite data in order to monitor carbon. Um, here, the main idea is to say, okay, if we want to improve carbon, if we want to improve carbon sequestration, but also if we want to reduce CO2 emission, which is another, another part, um, we have to measure it. So that's the main topic. Uh, and the main um, possibilities offer, of, which are offered by satellite data is to be able to measure something at scale and like in an homogeneous way. So that's why we are using mostly satellite data. Maybe I can, uh, I can start the tutorial. I don't know if I can wait a bit, like five minutes more. So before I uh, will very quickly um, uh, explain who who am I? So I'm Basil Goussa. I'm the, the CTO and uh, the co-founder of uh, of Net Carbon. And um, as I, as I said just before, the, the main objective of Net Carbon is to to monitor uh, carbon. Um, I I work in the, um, the earth observation domain uh, on big data and AI, uh, mostly for different companies. And um, and uh, we are part of the Pangeo community, not uh, the Pangeo community in Europe, um, the, the main idea. And uh, if anyone wants to join and want to, to keep some news on Pangeo, we are here and we will, play, we will be pleased to, to, to explain a bit uh, what is Pangeo. And I always saw a lot of people who are part of, the, of, of Pangeo, mainly in the, in the US. Um, so Pangeo is an ecosystem that is helping us uh, to build some like big data geospatial tools and platform and and um, pipeline. Uh, we are using a lot, uh, obviously, stack uh, within Net Carbon because it's allowing us to be able to monitor and to catch some different type of of data and to use like different satellites and at the end to be able to do some between those type of, of satellites. Uh, and um, we, we, we won uh, another challenge, which is the, the Copernicus Master. It's a challenge um, which was led by uh, Planet. Um, and um, 
it's uh, it's definitely allowing us to to use some different type of data because we are now using uh, uh, planet scope and L3 data, which is a specific type of data uh, without clouds, for example. And um, also to to have a bit more of um, of um, ads on the, on net carbon. So this tutorial will be will be based on like four different parts, uh, and uh, obviously the major part of the tutorial will be focusing on on the Jupyter notebook. Uh, but before that, before to dive in the Jupyter notebook, I would like to just uh, introduce very quickly um, net carbon. So as we all know, we have to fight against climate change, and uh, we all know that the temperature of the Earth will increase by the end of the century. So we definitely we 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 have to act. Um, we have to act. We have to reduce CO2 emission, obviously, and uh, we have to increase carbon sequestration. So to be a bit more clear, carbon sequestration is the the power of the soil, the power of the plants to store CO2 mainly based on photosynthesis. But before to and at the same time, sorry to reduce and increase carbon uh, sequestration and to reduce CO2 emission, we need to be able to monitor it. We will need to be able to see trends to improve carbon sequestration based on facts, based on measurements. So that's what we are working on at Net Carbon. We are working on a way to measure CO2 sequestration with satellite data. So, all these um, all these possibilities is directly linked to satellite imagery. So we are using different type of satellites. As I said, we are using Sentinel-2, Copernicus data, but also planet imagery. And this like this satellite is allowing us to retrieve some different indicator that we have correlated with different uh, measurements that is allowing us to be able at the end to measure the CO2 flux. That's the first part. And the second part, which is also extremely important, is to be able to detect practices, to see like, okay, if there is a difference in CO2, emission, uh, CO2 sequestration, it's directly linked to these practices or these practices on agricultural land. Okay, so that's that was the what we are doing in Dent Carbon, but what we need to in order to, to, to implement our vision, in order to implement uh, a way to measure carbon sequestration, we obviously need to retrieve insight at scale. So here it's a, a little schema that we, we have done at, at Net Carbon and that we are going to explain uh, during this very, very during this tutorial um, and explain how it's possible now, based on different types of technologies, to build some indicator at scale. So the first step, obviously, is to extract some different satellite data. And uh, as I said before, one type of extremely important, um, uh, extremely important uh, package liber libraries and catalog is stack. So why it's important for us? It's because it's allowing us to be able to connect to those different type of data without the need to um, uh, rewrite all the all the code each time to, to, to have just one app API, which is able to connect different type of satellite data. And I, I, I was uh, extremely, um, um, extremely happy to see that EODAG is uh, directly adding um, uh, XRA, um, at the XRA, like EODAG cube. Um, it could be very interesting for us to implement EODAG here in order to have a different type of satellite uh, data provider more easily than adding by ourselves some different um, different API. So that's the first step, the extraction. And after I will speak a bit about the transformation, how we can compute some different indexes based on Pangeo, obviously like those packages like XRA, uh, Dask, and mostly one thing that we are extremely, um, uh, what one thing that we find extremely important it's um, and a really game changer for us, it's coiled. And I will dive a bit on coiled and what is coiled. Um, mainly coiled is allowing us to deploy our code. So the, to deploy our uh, uh, directly within the netbook, you can run all your code 
within the cloud, based on Curl, and Curl will, will build all the cluster that you need to compute the code. So it's extremely, uh, it's an extremely efficient way to scale your processing without the need to have like um, uh, the infrastructure monitoring and without the need to go out of your notebook. Uh, obviously, we need some different packages uh, like the Sotoflux, but also the vegetation, the cloud mask, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at the end of this uh, this session, we will dive a bit on how to load the data after and how what are the main challenges that we are confront at NetCarbon to load this data. Uh, today, we are using uh, some different database and one of the database that we are using is Google BigQuery, which is allowing us to, to push some different uh, indicator within the cloud and to retrieve and to compute some different uh, indexes on top of, um, on top of our database. Um, and uh, the first, the, the last part that we are not going to speak, uh, uh, to speak during this talk, during this session, is some API that you can build on top of your database, obviously. Um, and uh, uh, as I said before, the last part will, uh, if we have some some time, will focus uh, on the pipeline. So. Here you have the first step, which is the extraction. You have the second step, which is, which is the, the transformation. Uh, and the last one, which is the how to, to load the, the data. But if you can't uh, do it like in the, at the right pace, and if you can't monitor the output of your data, you will miss something. So here it's like the, a way to orchestrate everything and to, to have something which is uh, more robust. Okay, and now we can dive directly in the, in the Jupyter notebook. Uh, can you see the screen? So, um, here we, we are in the, we are directly in one notebook, which is the OGC uh, notebook for this um, this session, uh, and I will explain exactly what all these different functions are doing, and we will dive directly uh, on it. So the first function here, the first packages that I have to import is Coiled. So as I said, Coiled is a way to compute your uh, processing compute your code directly at scale within the cloud. So it's managing the creation of a cluster, a Dask cluster, uh, directly. After I'm using, um, we are using at NetCarbon Perfect, which is the way to uh, compute your your web web workflow in order to like design uh, what is the task, what is the flow. You know, the case, the parameters, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to be able at the end to have something which can really like be uh, um, an extract, transform a lot, a real, a real ETL, and which will be able to 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 run every day, every two day, every month, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, the, the last one, which is uh, just for visualization topic, I'm importing Kepler GL, which is you know, some libraries which is helping um, uh, anyone to see uh, to see geospatial data um, and to um, explore this uh, this data so this is the three packages that i'm importing but obviously there is a lot more uh, packages um, for the purpose of this talk i have um, i have merged some different function directly within some different function and I will dive a, a bit, uh, a bit on it, but very, very quickly. The main objective is not to speak about something that was already explained, so XRA and all these components. Um, so we have like uh, six functions, six uh, packages. Sorry. The first one is extract API. So here it's um, something that is like very internal. It's uh, to extract the location. So 
you can obviously like here replace by a read geo by um, a geo, geo pandas and a read file to just retrieve the location so it's here just to retrieve the location and we have a specific id for this location which is easier for us to 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 run some different pipeline you have the extract sentinel2 so the extract sentinel2 is mainly um, composed of the stack uh, stack search sat search sorry so here you have the sat search sentinel2 function so you have the bounding box and the dates and uh, based on this you just have to use the url of uh, earth uh, search which is the endpoint of the catalog a stack catalog you have the collection sentinel2 l2 cogs and you can search for several items based on your different um, parameters. So here are the collection, obviously, to retrieve the Sentinel-2 in cards format, the dates, the date time, which is put here, the bounding box, and here. And uh, we have you have here some different, uh, very simple function. So to the geometry to bounding box, is, the idea is to, to put a geometry and to retrieve a bounding box. And uh, one which is important is this function, create data cube. So I think we can maybe we will we will try in, in the in the future the, the EODAG um, cube in order to create data cube more easily. Today we are using those two functions. Um, here it's important to see that it's extremely easy today to build a data cube based on different satellite data thanks to the work of all these communities, all these communities, sorry. Um, because I'm not using a lot of packages. Uh, as I said, for search Sentinel-2, we are using just SAT search in order to search within the catalog, the stack catalog. And after an awesome packages, uh, extremely helpful to design very quickly some uh, to compute and to imagine very quickly some new insights, uh, to compute very easily uh, some time series is the stack stack um, packages. So um, what is stack stack? So it's extremely simple. Uh, the output of SAT search is, a, is based on the stack. So you will have a stack uh, item list and based on stack, um, it's building a data cube. So um, you will have several items and you will have at the end one data cube with all the different items. And that's it. That's the function that we are using. I'm directly moving to, to the, the rest of the notebook and we will dive a bit more within these different packages when we will need them. So let's retrieve the location. And now let's use the packages that we have um, shown just before. Uh, okay. So what is very interesting here is that you can retrieve so extremely easily directly a data cube with the different parameter that you have put uh, at the beginning. So let's up, let's check here. For example, we we have the input location just here which is Libourne is near 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 Bordeaux in France we have extract the Sentinel-2 data based on this um, these packages and you will have your data cube with all the different timestamp with the rest with respect to the location that you you have uh, you have the same with all the different bands and all the different timestamp. So here yeah, it's the end of uh, 2019 until 2021. So I have my data cube. It's not a huge one, it's a uh, eight gigabyte. And after, I can do just some filtering on the data cube. Uh, here I'm filtering by cloud cover. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, yeah, 
30. So I will keep just value with the cloud cover below uh, 30. So I can check it now if it's, uh, it's here. So you can see that we have just now uh, within our data cube, we have just uh, elements, items with a cloud cover below um, below 30. So obviously all this processing is not uh, uh, done uh, directly because you are working with the metadata and uh, it's why it's not very like, um, it's, it's not time consuming. It's just like uh, building a graph, a computation graph. And after we can directly move to the interesting parts. So here we have mainly uh, three different functions, and those three different functions are allowing us to build um, directly uh, some processing at scale. So the first one is like the main idea of this uh, of this talk is to explain how it's possible to do some processing at, at scale today based on code. So what we are using here, it's the packages that I have imported at the beginning of the session, is called, and I am using the cluster function. I'm saying that I want for this, um, for this um, session, I want a cluster with six workers, with eight gigabytes of memory, based on software NetCarbon AWS, and the name net carbon. And after, so uh, just to, to maybe spend one minute more within this different, um, uh, within this different, um, sorry, uh, input. So here obviously is the number of workers, here the memory. Here it's the, not the tricky one, but one of the most important is just uh, when you init initiate the cluster at the beginning, when you go to, can go to cold. Okay, so when you go to cold, you can directly create some different software environments. And these software environments are based on different Conda packages and PIP packages. So it's extremely easy to start with. Uh, for example, here you have import cold, cold create software environment, the name, the challenge, the channel, sorry. Uh, and you just have to say, okay, conta forge default and the dependencies. So here I'm using the net carbon AWS packages. So these packages is mainly composed of Dask, XRA, and uh, Rio um, XRA. The name of the cluster is net carbon. So when you have built your cluster, so what is important is to connect your cluster with um, Dask because you want to, to do your computation, not within your computer, but you want to do your computation within the cloud. The cloud. So here I'm using from Dask that distributed import clients and saying that the clients, so where the processing will be done is directly on the cluster that will be created. So where there will be six workers and eight gigabyte of memory. Uh, one last thing that I'm using is just to retrieve the, the link of the, of the cluster because it's important for just to, to see if the cluster is working well. And here just after we have um, some different um, function. So we have the function Sentinel-2 Cloud Mask. Uh, it's a very common function. It's just to to, um, to compute the cloud mask within the data cube. So we have we, we we have just data cube with less than um, than um, thirty uh, percentage of clouds, but we still want to compute the cloud mask. So here the main idea is to say, okay, let's select the SCL, which is the um, SEN classification, and there is the, 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 the 
cloud mask within the SCL and to keep the value that are good um, based on um, based on this link and to compute the binary mask and after to select just the value where you have um, you don't have any clouds based on this is based on the send to core because we, we retrieve the data from AWS so here um, here so at the beginning the idea was to compute the long surface temperature that's one uh, indexes that we are using at uh, at net carbon but um, but uh, finally, we will compute the SAVI indexes. So one of the reasons was that the, the connection with Landsat 8 uh, seems to, to be a bit more difficult uh, now on AWS than before. So we, we, we decided to connect to, to Sentinel-2 and to use the, the SAVI directly, to use the, the Sentinel-2 data directly. So what is the SAVI? So it's... Uh, it's a bit exact. It's, it's a bit the, the same than the NDVI, but with one um, one major dif difference, which is the there is less correlation with the the soil. So okay, let's let's suppose that it, then the, this is the NDVI. That's not the the, the the important part of the of the of the tutorial. So here I'm just going to compute the the mask. But as said before, we are not going to compute directly the masks. We are just going to build the computation graph. So the Sentinel Cloud mask uh, run in that um, that run data cube is going to prepare the data cube for the real computation. So now I can check the data cube. I have still my data cube here. Okay, uh, just one thing. Maybe you can. Maybe that's something that you you you, you want to to ask. Why I have adding a run here? So uh, it's because there is this decorator which is task. It's the pref perfect way to build some different uh, task. But if I erasing, if I, I can erase this and just uh, compute the, 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 the value without the run, but you will see after why it's important to keep the task here. And now let's, um, let's work on our, our data. So here I'm saying that I want to compute the savvy. So first step, I want to create a cluster. So create a cluster will directly use this function create a cluster so we'll ask coiled to create a cluster for me with six worker and eight gigabytes of memory and after directly we'll connect to the dust distributed so to, to my client we'll connect my client to the cluster so what i can see here is that um, they found the software environment so they say okay uh, the Net carbon AWS is um, exists, so that's the first good step. And after, it's starting to build my specific cluster. So it could take two to one to five minutes. Um, I, I, the cluster was supposed to be to be online and to be to be to be here, but. Uh, if you don't uh, run any computation on your cluster, the cluster um, is like uh, is um, ending by itself. Uh, I think you have like 30 minutes. Um, this is the time that you have to, to do any computation. And if after, um, sorry, so you have, um, the cluster is ending 30 minutes if uh, after, um, any computation was um, well done. So yeah, I'm waiting the cluster to, 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 to run and I can check on the dashboard that to, they start to build the cluster. So uh, here I have the number of worker is zero, 
on six. So let's say that um, I don't have any worker for now because the cluster is still in, um, in uh, is still like um, creating. They are creating the cluster, and they are creating the cluster directly on my IWS account with all the parameter that I need. Uh, that I need, so I can check. So I can check on my AWS account. Up. And now I can see on my AWS account that I have several I have several intense instance that are uh, in execution. So that's extremely helpful. And uh, the cluster is OK. And I can check to the cluster directly. So here is the U of um, Dask. And I can see that the computation is already done. So I'm going to, to do the computation again. Up. So it's going to connect to the cluster. And normally, I should see. So I can see the computation of my indicator directly. So here it's not a very huge uh, data cube. It's uh, eight gigabytes, but um, we can go uh, and work on one tera, two terabytes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so the computation is done. So we run the Savi and the cloud mask for one year of data. After I can do uh, just uh, some another, another computation, which is the spatial uh, mean and the temporal mean. And after the main idea is to retrieve this data. Uh, so today in the Pandas, but uh, it will be extremely helpful to retrieve this data in um, in Dask Data Frame. But um, the connection between Dask Data Frame and uh, BigQuery is not very uh, well defined uh, today, or we have the the, the feeling that the, the the connection is not well defined today, or we have to work on it. So today we are using Pandas, but it could be a, um, a bit tricky to work with Pandas as we are working with like very huge uh, data. So now let's retrieve so the indexes for the temporal, the temporal mean and the spatial mean. So now it's like processing, um, processing time to data cube to data frame. So here is just some function that we have in the post processing. And, uh, it's not very, uh, it's not very like um, not very complex function. It's just uh, okay. Time data cube to data frame is to say that we are retrieving the data cube. We are using the name of the data cube. We are reset. We reset the index, and we are using after um, pandas uh, for the rest of the of the of the session. So now we have the savvy for one year. Um, and um, this is mainly thanks to uh, Coiled and for these different functions, as well as Dask, as XRA, and all, all this ecosystem. Um, it was definitely not possible to, to do it before. Uh, we were obliged to download all the, the data and to do it um, within our own computer, which could be, lead to a very time consuming um, processing. We have the index, the savvy in the special mean. And after we can just, uh, just visualize the data directly within the notebook by using KeyPlayerGL. So let's visualize the data. Let's say we want a new layer. We are going to use, oh, sorry, uh, the layer name is savvy. 
o oh, no, bueno, OGC. So we want to use point. And the field color, we are going to use savvy and we are going to use red to green. Okay, so normally we should have our data in somewhere near bottle, yeah. Okay. So as we are working with Sentinel, I think we can go to five. And uh, here we are just going to the savvy. And as we really like satellite data, we're going to use the base map, satellite base map. So here we have the data, the computing data. So we can see like uh, the, the savvy for different type of uh, different area near border. And this was directly, this is the main for one year without the, the clouds. Okay, so now that I'm pretty like, I'm pretty happy with my data. I want now to save this data. So today there is obviously several way to save the data. Uh, I can just write a uh, GeoTIFF and a COG file um, directly to, to, to my bucket, my, uh, my Google bucket or RBVS bucket. Uh, here today, we, we prefer to, to load this data to BigQuery. Maybe that's not the, the, the right way. And I think we, we can discuss on um, what is the, the plus and what is, the, what is the gain to do it. But we really like to push our indexes on BigQuery when these indexes are very important for us. So here it's not the relevant example because the savvy is not very time consuming to, but uh, we have a lot of different indexes that are extremely time consuming. So we like to keep it and to build some different application based on this data. So now we can push it directly to the cloud. So what we are using, uh, it's load to BigQuery. Yep, so it's in, in the load. Uh, it's extremely simple. Uh, we are using the Pandas to BigQuery, Google BigQuery. And that's an extremely powerful library. Uh, it's an extension of extension of Pandas. And uh, we, we would extremely, we will be extremely, um, it could be extremely helpful to have this exactly same extension, but with Dask, um, Dask um, data frame. Today, uh, that's not the case as I, as I know, but it could be uh, very helpful to have this type of function. So maybe there is some work to, to, to do, like uh, some cooperation to, do, to, to, to implement this type of, of, uh, of possible function. And so that's done now we have our um, our indexes on uh, Google BigQuery, and we can directly retrieve these indexes on the Google BigQuery. So maybe yeah, we have a bit of time still. So I will explain a bit something that we really like and that's a real game changer for us is okay now that i have like all my not my pipeline but i have all my jupyter notebook with the extraction the transformation as well as the so the visualization part is like just for to just uh, uh, in the notebook we will not uh, we will not use it after but we have everything the extraction transform and load we want to build some flow based on it because uh, we are not going to compute, obviously, each time a, a, a notebook to, to retrieve our data. So here we are using uh, an extremely um, uh, powerful uh, libraries, an extremely powerful library and open source. They are also, they have also a cloud um, uh, geo. 
uh, a cloud inf interface that are that are very powerful also. So it's perfect. Uh, it's the library that we have imported at the, the beginning of the beginning of the tutorial here. And that's the reason that we have each time we have dot run in our function, it's because it's each function are task, you know, are a perfect task. So when you are working with a perfect task, you need to add the dot run. Uh, it's allowing the, yeah, the, the function to understand that you are not uh, working with task, we are just working with the, with the function. So what is the main benefit of using a uh, uh, flow, a perfect flow? It's because after you can directly use all the power of Dask, all the power of XRA, and all the power of our pipeline. Uh, perfect is directly, um, it's, in, it's an, I think, native, Python native, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I, I, I have to check it. But um, you will just have to enter your parameters. So here are the parameters of the project, the, the start here, the end here, the cloud cover, the, the indexes, so that was the, the savvy. And directly, it's going to, to do like all the different steps. So the retrieve the location, the project, build the tech cube, build the processing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I have missed, I missed something here. Up, oh, it's uh, main, okay. Up, oh, you see main. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm not sure that it's going to, to, to work because there is a, a single step, but uh, here you have directly like all the flow with all the tasks, so it's, it's extremely good to have some log, to say, okay, I'm going to do the task one, the task two, the task three, et cetera, et cetera, and to have like all the computation graph. So I'm going to do this, that, this task. It's building the cluster, so I can go directly to the cluster, okay. Uh, and after it's adding the metadata, the H3 indexes. And you have the result, which is directly online. So here you have all the, all the pipeline to extract, to extract, transform, and, and load. And after you can obviously, and you have obviously, to retrieve the, this in the Python function, and you can deploy it directly. After you can check it on the perfect view. And you will have directly on the perfect view, like the state of each of your different tasks. Thank you very much. If you, if you have any question, uh, I'm pleased to, to answer and thank you for your time. And all these all this different uh, possibilities are just here and are just possible because of all the work um, that uh, we, we have all done and all the packages that are existing with the cloud native communities. Thank you. Okay, and um, obviously I will, uh, I will, uh, I will put uh, I will put the, the, the notebook uh, on uh, online. Uh, the, the main idea is to have something which is um, more predictable. And uh, the main idea obviously is to promote all the work of this community, to be able at the end to have something which is easily uh, um, easy to use. And, um, and also we should and we, we will try to integrate uh, EODAG within this type of, of UTL. Could be very interesting to, to have the extraction part directly with, uh, 
with the with the UDAG uh, uh, package. I see no question. There is no question. I think on the chat. So um, I will happy to 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 leave the floor for the next session. I don't know who will will. And obviously, if you want to to have any any um, if you want to have any news uh, on the or if you have so many questions of the on the the, the the main strategy of the extract transform and load and on the packages that we are using, uh, I will be happy to to answer. And my email is zildatkusa@carbon.fr. And obviously, we have LinkedIn. Or you can just go to LinkedIn and you will obviously you will find uh, you will find us. Thank you for your time. Bye. If if I have some time, maybe I can I can just screen, I can just share something. Um concerning maybe the, the, the pricing, even if I'm not working at coiled, so uh, so that's definitely not my 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 purpose to sell you to yeah, I'm going to share the screen. Yep. So concerning the costs of coil, so here I can see that we have deployed a six uh, worker and the uh, cost is less than one euro per hour. So, so it's still, it's still, uh, it's still something, but uh, definitely uh, if you have to do some like very big UT, uh, ETL, some very big, big extract transform and, and load, and you really need a lot of computation power, um, it could definitely be uh, very useful for you to 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 use it um, because it's not very like uh, it's, it's not very expensive and it's definitely extremely easy to, to to use because you just you can just stay within your your notebook and just within your notebook you will have like uh, just like uh, like three line yeah one two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven lines to, to add. And just with this seven line, if you are just already working with Panjo and Excel and Dask, just with these seven lines, you will be able to do some computation uh, at scale. So the cost is like extremely uh, compared to, the, to what, what you, you can like um, deploy very easily compared to what you can do uh, with it. I think there is, um, the comparison is is um, is, uh, is extremely easy to to do. Okay, so that that was the the, the last thing that I want to want to to add. Thank you. Bye.